Last week Land Rover announced the next generation concept for the replacement of the Defender. Part of their project icon, in celebration of the iconic nature of the 60 year history of the Land Rover in the UK, this concept was a complete overhaul of the car's design. In my opinion it was a transformation too far. In abandoning the original style and function of the Defender, Land Rover tried to create another, potentially junior version of their current range. But the Defender is different and deserves evolution rather than revolution. This is my design for the Land Rover. My name is Michael Bond, I'm not a professional car designer, my core expertise is in solving financial and technical challenges, and my current focus is on viable, sustainable, risk-free strategies for the revival of the world economy. The recent launch of the first concept model for the future Defender set me thinking about what really ought to be done for this iconic vehicle to retain its practicality and utility. The Land Rover Defender isn't a sport utility vehicle. It isn't a Soho coach for the darlings in London who want to act like country folk but don't want to get their calf length kid leather booty dirty. It's a light utility vehicle that will be first found scampering over mountains through fields, building sites or battlefields and it's supposed to be simple, practical and functional. The Defender isn't supposed to look pretty or be assembled by robots and repaired by clean room laboratory technicians with engineering degrees. The Defender is intended for real work in the harshest environments with the minimum support equipment, just a spanner and a hammer when required. If you've seen the Defender or any of its predecessors, you'll know it isn't the prettiest thing in the world. But it's not intended to be. It's a workhorse for working people, mostly men, who want a solid, rugged, simple and practical structural design. It's not for girls. So let's begin with the basics. I haven't changed the Defender too much. If it's a good design, leave the basics alone. What I have done is refine, stretch, enlarge and reshape the core body shape and its features. So let's start at all. I've stretched the body about 10 to 12 inches to increase capacity and fit other features. The most important of these features are the creature comforts for the modern driver. More space at the front of the cabin for deeper dashboard, airbags, air conditioning, sheep trackers and so on. Not forgetting the way modern men tend to like their Yorkie bars a bit too much, so let's have a bit more belly room. I bet you've already peeked at the shape and seen the side doors. Yes, you're right, the doors open from the centre. This is the way to create more useful side space in the car. Open both doors, remove all internal furniture, except for the driver's seat, and you have enough useful space for whatever. Tools, plant, machinery, storage, luggage, or anything else you need to carry can be stored inside, with the widest access for everything you need. And if you're looking carefully, you'll see I've tried to restore the useful practicality of a spare wheel on the bonnet. This will only work if another feature is incorporated, a horizontally opposed engine. Already well used in the Subaru car range, their box engines reduce the centre of gravity and the height needed for the engine under the bonnet. This leaves room to restore the bonnet spare, partly reset into the bonnet, with locking cover plate on top for security. If you look closely at the doors, you will see a design safety feature I believe ought to be fitted to all vehicles, a reflector panel on the inside end of the door. When you open the door, the reflector is exposed. Any traffic coming from behind will see the reflector at night, enhancing your safety. I will incorporate this in any design I create. Look carefully at the corners of the body, front and rear, and you will see a standard lighting hub unit. Every corner has a standard right angle indicator light, duplicated at the top corners of the roof, and a vertical column of LED lights. At the front the LEDs act as fog lights, one column facing forward and another at an angle to the sides. This will illuminate the corners of the driver's vision, especially on dark stormy nights when you're called out into the country in an emergency. The main lighting hub at the front contains a second powerful direct fog light and the main headlight. At the rear this is replaced with a tinted running light while the rear LED columns act as reversing lights. The column units are identical throughout, so every unit can be swapped for an identical one. All mountings are the same, all manufacture and maintenance is simplified and cheaper. The intention is to reduce manufacturing cost, make all maintenance as simple and cheap as possible and reduce the complexity of logistical supply for larger organisations. This cost-effective design philosophy is also in the standard wheel cover on the rear and bonnet storage. Taken to extremes, the idea of low maintenance utility ought to be incorporated in the entire body design and construction. Module panels easily removed or replaced, attached to the core chassis and a crash frame. This is not a body shell to be built by robots, but something for easy field mechanics. Ideally, the roof will be a single module, incorporating a set of key lighting and safety features at both ends. As I've already mentioned, there is a corner indicator light at the front and rear. In the centre of each end there is a high definition wide angle security camera for road safety. 
If practical, there is another strip of LED fog lights either side of the front camera. With another camera at the rear, you don't want to be reversing into innocent sheep in the middle of the night. There will be two sets of LED or other inspection and work lights just over the rear door and angled down to flood the immediate rear of the car. This is why, as illustrated, I've chosen to sweep the tail of the roof line backwards. The Defender is renowned around the world as a compact and reliable security vehicle. The design I propose will enhance the safety of crew by creating a more secure, spacious core armoured cabin. By increasing the length of the main cabin and moving the seating backward, there ought to be sufficient room to incorporate a greater level of armour and a shielding box around the main crew space. This is especially to remove the crew back from the front wheels and shield them from the effects of landmines. For the last three years I have considered another solution to the design of defenders against landmines and improvised explosive devices. Widen the track width. Place the wheels outside the body and any explosion under the wheels will not damage the body as much compared to keeping the wheels underneath. Vertical force from a mine is deflected past the body shell instead of under it. Wider wheel arches will support external storage racks for all the toys the military like to play with. If you enjoy this and want to have your own Land Rover then let me know. As I made clear at the beginning, I'm not a professional car designer. My speciality is finance and the ways to reduce cost and risk in all projects and programs. For the last few years I have been drawing up a financial program, the Commonwealth Prosperity Plan, to revitalise the world economy independent of government strategy. And the Land Rover can form one element of this, especially if Land Rover want to adopt these ideas and work with me in developing them further. At the heart of this program is one simple offer. 100% cash refund on your subscription to the development of such projects. This is not an investment or direct purchase. The Prosperity Plan will deliver such a car to you and then arrange a full refund of your capital sponsorship. Depending on your local tax regime, this could be tax deductible in advance and tax free on delivery. It costs upwards of a thousand million pounds to design and deliver a new car, so this will be the starting target. A minimum order book of 10,000 units with subscriptions of £100,000 per unit. All government orders are welcome, the same proposition, a full cash refund to your government.